Welcome back to Cheddar's Opening Bell, everyone. Today's edition of Creating Connections is powered by AT&T Business Internet, dedicated internet access that allows us to bring the news to you. IoT devices can be found in almost all aspects of modern life. In fact, reports indicate that there will be more than 75 billion IoT devices installed worldwide by 2025. Joining us to discuss cybersecurity is the expert on the matter, cybersecurity expert, Peter Tran. Peter, great to have you here with us today. What threats? Thank you. Certainly, what threats do enterprises face if they don't properly secure their IoT devices? That's a great question, Brad. And I, I want to first talk about the landscape, which is driving this. So what we're in now is arguably the third platform of, I, of IT, which is cloud, mobile, and social. And what's happening is we're moving into the fourth platform, which is cloud, mobile, social, and IoT, which is completely converged and materialized. So with that trajectory uh, of growth, um, every business, especially critical infrastructure, are facing um, having some type of IoT device. That being the device is smart, it transmits critical data, and it's connected to the internet. And it can be very, very small, something like a closed circuit television, or even on a manufacturing environment where it's measuring tolerances when you're going into production environments. So, so we could see the latest news in the attacks with the oil pipelines and uh, you know meat productions and things like that, and even medical devices. So industries across the board, because now they're more connected from a B2B, business to business, uh, manufacturing supply chains, Disruption in those types of devices is absolutely number one on the watch list for every enterprise out there from a global scale. So simple things that happen for one device has a cascading effect like a hub and spoke in a bicycle that can affect a, a, a cascading event globally. So one piece of malware that enters one hub of an IoT that has dependencies across supply chains or transportation then has that cascading effect. So it's very, very serious. One of the most frightening attacks faced by IoT is ransomware and those attacks. How can ransomware impact IoT devices? So what's really important to know here is ransomware in itself can be detected, but what's, what's important is ransomware holds hostage or locks up the critical data of the network. Now you can recover from a ransomware attack by eliminating the malicious code, but, but oftentimes it's nearly impossible to recover because you don't have your data. So IoT devices in particular are much smaller, right? They're connected to the internet and they have a specific application. So when you attack a network of uh, IoT devices and or the hubs of millions and billions of dependencies there and you hold that data ransom or hostage, or you can destroy the data or disrupt the data that has the same compounding effect uh, across the board to supply chains and other critical infrastructures across hospitals and, and transportation that happens in almost three, four times faster than you would have a traditional attack or breach. And so since IoT or Internet of Things devices are all connected, they can easily also spread malware. So can you explain this threat a little bit more in depth? Sure, so I mentioned the hub and spoke model. So because IoT devices um, are growing so exponentially and they're not technically monitored very well. So monitoring and early detection is very key. So they, they oftentimes get put on networks, they're kind of forgotten. So things like air sensors, um, temperature sensors, anything like that, uh, smart parking meters, um, handheld devices at restaurants, those are all considered IoT devices and the software. So what happens is a code, a small piece of code may be inserted into one IoT device and then it moves to payment platforms, banking systems, uh, smart parking meters, anything that's even more connected. So a clever cyber attacker can write very, very small pieces of code for malicious code that goes virtually undetected because these IoT hubs aren't part of traditionally part of those enterprise monitoring and early detection security operation centers. Hmm. So for example, you know, AT&T in and of itself has a service around IoT connected managed services. So a lot of IoT being deployed now is part of those types of managed IoT services that bakes in the monitoring and detection and often has services around deployment and management of that. Certainly, and so with so much expansion in the IoT space, it can be hard for companies to know if all of their devices are actually secure. So how can businesses stay on top of securing all of their devices? So one critical area is 
um, it's no different than your traditional enterprise security, except these devices are uh, smaller, um, they're unmanaged, and so what you have to do is you have to take a, a proper inventory of your new infrastructure. Now businesses are moving more and more to cloud hosted environments, right? Um, it, 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 it's a cost savings measure, it's a scalability measure, but along with that comes how do you manage the IoT environment that's also being managed and hosted in the cloud. So the shift is enterprise should look at how do I monitor and detect for inclusive of IoT devices in my managed environment. So it's not a hard leap, it's just a lot of due diligence to have that proper inventory of what you have and where you need to place the uh, priority in monitoring and early detection and mitigation of potential breaches. And just lastly, while we have you, depending on the size of your business, your IT team might not be able to handle some of the more daunting cybersecurity issues. So what kind of option do you have in that case? Most enterprises, global multinationals, do have a uh, what's called a managed detection and response service. So a lot of third parties, a lot of there's a lot of companies just specializing in that to help them augment their IT staff to have that um, bat phone, so to speak, that red phone you pick up and you'll be able to augment your staff and scale up very quickly in those events. Um, so that's becoming the norm now, especially when it comes to cloud host environments. And oftentimes your cloud host environment vendors, um, AT&T included in their managed services of IoT, would have attached to that that augmentation service as well. So, you know, if you're working with an AT&T or, or, or others, um, that is something that you should look into first and foremost and ask those questions. Do you provide those augmented cyber breach services and or monitoring detection services to help with my cloud hosted environment, especially for IoT devices? Cybersecurity expert Peter Tran, thank you so much for joining us here this morning with the expert breakdown for certain. And ATT Business is helping businesses communicate collaborate and stay connected virtually anytime, anywhere. Visit att.com forward slash network services for more information.